I'm not very well. My doctor has ordered absolute quiet. I... I wonder if it's hoping too much that... that some of these rooms are vacant. Yeah, well, these days it is, sir. Everything's full up. As soon as the room's empty, it gets taken again before they can hardly clean it up. I see. Well, we'll just hope for the best. Willie, tip this young man, then help get me ready for bed. Please. Yes, sir, I've already been informed. No calls, whatever. Certainly, sir. Well, at least we know that all the rooms are taken. What do you say, Willie? What number should we pick? 7-Eleven. Ought to be good. Besides, I saw a dame register there with rocks on her arm big enough to keep a body at the bottom of the river. 7-Eleven, yeah, should be all right. <laughs> okay, Willie, 7-Eleven it is. This is just like fishing, Willie. You throw out the net and let the suckers swim right into it. Yeah, but how do we know? Suppose nobody comes in a 7-Eleven with anything that pays off. Everybody ain't got secrets. Oh, whistle that again, Willie. Everybody has got secrets. I got them and you got them. Yeah, and sooner or later, we always spill them to someone. Hey, Willie, get me a drink, will you? Yeah. Eddie, Mr. Dodge, room 7-Eleven. Thank you. We've been here, Rex, and what have we got to show for it? A tip on a fixed race. And a beetle only pay ten bucks more than a favor. Stop crying. We'll hit it sooner or later. A new guy just checked in. Wait a minute. He's on the horn. Uh, hello, Sheila. Uh, this is John. Now, I'm sorry I'm a day late, but I couldn't help it. Oh, well, thank heavens you're here. Do you have the key? What key? Well, that's funny. The clerk downstairs didn't even mention it. I sent it to John Dodge, Hotel Manhattan, and marked it, please hold. Well, I'm sure it's here. Look, I'm going to get cleaned up. Then I'll uh, get the tube, and I'll call you back. Be careful, John. You know what it's worth to the right people. Or the <laughs> Don't worry, darling. I'll get it. Bye-bye. Bye. What's up? I don't know, but I'll find out. Keep your eye on room 711. I think we just got a letter from home. I 
you get the letter? It was a cinch. I told the mail clerk my name was John Dodge, and he gave it to me. What is it? You tell me. Uh, it looks like a goofed up radio tube. Split two ways, it ought to bring us 20 cents apiece. Big score. All right, so it's little. The dame on the wire says it's big, it's big. Big schmig, what is it? I don't know. We're gonna stay on that area till we find out. Of course I told the police. They've already double-checked the hotel staff. The clerk downstairs recalls giving a letter to a Mr. Dodge when he came on at noon, but, but he, he can't, can't remember what the man looked like. That's right. However, the police are checking all the companies who are vitally interested in this invention. How important is this invention? Very important, Mr. Barnett. It's a radically new type of electronic tube, and it is important. It can revolutionize certain industries, and it can put others completely out of business. Now, there are some companies who don't have enough money to buy it legitimately who'd stop at nothing to destroy it. Is it your invention? No, it's Sheila's fa uh, Miss Colby's father. He's been working on it for years. It's his. And as their friend and lawyer, I'm only helping them market it. Who else knows it's here besides yourselves and the interested companies? That I don't know. But apparently the news leaked out that we were coming here. You see, Miss Colby arrived in New York three days before I did and borrowed an apartment from a friend of hers who's gone abroad. Now, somebody knew that. Somebody who wants that tube very badly. Why wouldn't they buy it? You're here to market it, aren't you? Sure. To the highest bidder. And some of the companies haven't got a chance in competitive bidding. How soon after you got here did you phone Miss Colby? Oh, about, well, two minutes at the most. You checked in at 11.30 and the letter with the key in it was picked up at 12, is that right? That's right. And you have Miss Colby's word that she told nobody but you about mailing her that key. Absolutely no one. She told me on the phone. Hey, she could have been overheard. She could have been talking to two people. She could have been on a party line that the telephone company doesn't know about. I'd like to see her apartment. Sure. Uh, just a second. Hello, operator. Uh, will you get me Jerome 72983, please? I'll just make sure that she's home. Uh, hello, Sheila. Yeah, I'm coming right over. No, there's nothing new. Well, the police are checking the post office. Yeah. Now, look, Sheila, don't worry, will you? I'm not just sitting here. I've got somebody helping me. Here's a detective, one of the best. Yeah, he's coming over with me. Mike Barnett. Hold it. What? No, I said Barnett. Great. That's just great. Hey, Rex. Come here. I want you to hear this. We should have got a wire recorder. No, not the equipment. Here's a detective, one of the best. Yeah, he's coming over with me. Mike Superintendent said the terminal box was here in the basement. I only borrowed the apartment upstairs, John, not the basement. Now, don't be flip, Sheila. Someone must have overheard your phone call to Mr. Dodge about that key, Miss Colby. Possibly your line was tapped. But I've only been in the apartment three days. Could have been tapped the day you got here. Well, here's the terminal box. Well, wouldn't they have to be upstairs in the apartment to tap the phone? Looks as if it hadn't been opened, but we'll find out. The wires in this terminal box are in pairs. Each pair is a circuit leading to a phone up in a building. To tap a line, all you have to do is to hook into the pair of wires that leads to the phone you want to tap. Well, how can we find out if it's been tapped? I'll have to check with the phone company about opening it and possibly some others. This isn't the only bridgehead between here and the exchange. The tap could have been on any one of them. You take Miss Colby to your hotel and wait for me. I still think we ought to haul out of here, Rex. They hide or not, maybe they're wise. Nobody's got anything on us, have they? I know, but, oh, Rex, how long are we going to wait? I don't know, until we find out what we got here. And more important, what it's worth. No luck. No? Sorry to be so long, but I had to get a court order to examine the bridgeheads. Any luck? The three bridgeheads between Miss Colby's apartment and the Jerome Exchange. The first one's in the basement of her apartment, the second's on a pole at 65th and Jerome. So far, it looks like our line was never tapped. Or if it was, now that the tube's been heisted, the tap's been removed. But there's a third bridgehead right here in this hotel. 
some difficulty downstairs. We can't get to it for an hour, but I have an idea we can get some information in the meantime. Yeah, but nobody knew I was coming to this hotel, except Sheila. And she's sure she didn't tell anyone. Somebody knew about that key. How long did you say you were in this room before you used the phone? <laughs> Believe me, not more than two minutes. Alexander Graham Bell couldn't cut in at that time. If the taps in this hotel were set up for somebody else, they'd just cut into you by accident. I wanted you here because you may be in danger. The tube is already gone, Mr. Barnett. I know it, and you know it, but do all the parties who wanted to get it know it? Oh, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to write the telephone company. Just a routine letter, I suppose. Oh, here's your order, sir. Thank you. Will you put it over here, please? There you go. Say, uh, ain't you, uh, Mike Barnett? Yeah. Well, uh, you working a case here? Well, gee, anything I can do, Mr. Barnett. Thanks, I'll let you know. The name's Eddie Flaherty. Thanks, Eddie. Have you got a public stenographer here in the hotel? Will you connect me with her, please? Hello, my name is Mike Barnett. I'm in room 711. Can you take some dictation? I know it's late, but this is just a short note. To the telephone company. It won't take long. I'll be right down. It's Barnett, the shamus. He's on his way downstairs to the stenographer. He's got a letter to the phone company. Get downstairs and keep your eyes open. That's it, Miss Steele. Charge it to room 711. Mark it confidential and send the letter up when it's done. Oh, and I'd like a copy, please. Certainly, Mr. Barnett, in just a few minutes. Thank you. Eddie? Oh, Eddie, take this up to room 711, will you please? Original for signature and one copy. Sure thing, Miss Steele. Thanks, Eddie. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Barnett. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Where's the carbon paper? I don't know. That's all she gave me, Mr. Barnett. Okay, Eddie, I'll take care of it. Something wrong, Mr. Barnett? I'd like to pick up the carbon paper you used in my letter. Oh, why, I threw that out, Mr. Barnett. Oh? Isn't it customary when a letter's marked confidential to submit the carbon paper with the copy? Well, yes, if a customer requests it, but you didn't, so I threw it out. Oh, maybe it's in the wastebasket. Empty. Maybe it's here. Please, Mr. Barnett, I'm in a hurry. You won't find it there. No, I guess not. How about the pocket of the man who just left here? What? I could swear I saw a man leaving here just now, putting a piece of carbon paper in his pocket. I didn't think it was mine. Why should it be? It wasn't. Now will you please leave? Sure, but I'll be back with the manager. You'd better be here. No. I think you'd better be. I mean, don't call the manager. Okay. How about that carbon paper? But it seemed like an unimportant letter. I didn't think there was any harm. He said he was a friend of yours. Who was he? I don't know. I never saw him before. He asked for the carbon on the letter I had just written to the telephone company. After you told him where the letter was going? No, no. He already knew it was going to the telephone company. Oh, he did? Okay, Miss Steele, I want the truth. It's important, even though that letter isn't. Did you tell him where that letter was going? No, I just told you I didn't. He already knew. Thanks very much, Miss Steele. We were worried. We couldn't understand what was keeping you. I've been earning my fee. What's up? The public stenographer says some man knew I wrote a letter to the telephone company. Only one of three people could have told him. Who? You, Miss Colby, or me. Why, you don't think that Sheila or I did? No. I think I did. 
Boy, you sure bought us a valuable type document. What's it say? It's from Nothingville. About what? I'll call him up and ask him. Well, I don't like it. You don't have to. Here, keep these cans on. We're staying right here till we cash this gizmo in. Well, why don't you pull your shade down? I'm sorry, Mr. Nolan's allowed back here. All right, madam, I'll report it. I just want to examine your switchboard. Now, look, mister, this is about room 711. I've already told the manager and the phone company and the police I don't listen in on calls. Percy, there's a man staring in the woman in 432 from across the court. All day, that board lights up like the lights in Times Square. Who's got time to listen? Do you mind if I watch the lights for a minute? Hmm. Go ahead. Office? I'm sorry, madam, I wouldn't know who to call. But he's across the hall. Oh, Why don't you pull your shade down? See what I mean? What's that? Oh, that's a quiet number. That's a no-call plug. A guest doesn't want to be disturbed, sick or something. We plug the number. Who ordered it? Guest in, um, 777. Anything else? No, thanks. Just keep plugging. Thanks, mister. Office? Yes, madam, I reported it. I'll send up a bellboy right away. Who's in 777? <laughs> I'm not allowed to tell you. But they didn't say I couldn't show you. Oh, thanks. That's all right, sir. Eddie, would you please go up and see what you can do about the peeping Tom staring at the woman in 432? Would you mind telling me what you're looking for? The terminal box for this floor. Box has been jimmy open. Take a look at this. The power of wires that forms a circuit to room 777 has been tapped into the power of wires that forms a circuit to room 711. Well, how could they know what room I was in and in time to do it? They couldn't. They just tapped room 711, anybody who checked in. You happen to be their pigeon. Why don't we call the police and break in? You want your tube back, don't you? I certainly do. If they think anybody's wise, they'd throw it out the window. We need evidence. I get myself a room in this hotel and a tape recording machine. You get back to your room and keep this Colby company for a while. The room 711, please. Oh, I must have the wrong room. I was calling Mr. Dodge. This is Mr. Dodge's room. Oh, could this by any chance be Miss Colby? Yes. Miss Colby, I'm Charles Peterson. I represent Acme Electronics. I'm registered right here in your hotel, room 747. I just flew in from Cleveland because I understand you and Mr. Dodge are prepared to negotiate with respect to your father's invention. Well, yes, we are. That is... I won't waste any time, Miss uh, Colby. I'm prepared to pay and pay well for the exclusive distribution rights. I have with me a check for $10,000. Mr. Peterson, I can't talk about it until my attorney returns. He's in charge of all my business affairs. I understand. Uh, when will I be able to talk to him? I'm afraid he won't be back in less than an hour. Maybe a little more. Well, I'll stay right here in the hotel. Room 747. Uh, could he call on me, do you think? I'm sure you'll be glad to, Mr. P. I'm Mr. Dodge, Miss Colby's attorney. Oh, yes, Mr. Dodge. Come in, come in. I didn't expect you so soon. I returned much sooner than I expected. I see you have the tube with you. You're prepared to sell? That's why we returned to New York, sir. Sit down, Mr. Dodge. Thank you. Oh, take it easy, Sheila. It hasn't been an hour yet. I'm worried. You're worried. He signed a fictitious name to a check on my bank. I think we should wait for the police. Why? There'd be little satisfaction in that if we lost the tube. 
Besides, he needs that recording for evidence. No, no, I think we'd better let Barnett handle this in his own way. Splendid, Mr. Dodge. Now, if you'll just sign that receipt, I'll give you the check, and we'll talk to Miss Colby about royalties in the morning. Who is it? It's me, Mr. Barnett, Eddie. I forgot to give you the receipt for that recording machine I got for you. Just shove it under the door, Eddie. Mr. Barnett, huh? Okay, Mr. Barnett, now where's that recorder? Up yourself. No, you pull it out. Get around there. Take a little walk. Not far, just down the hall. Go on, get going. Wait a minute. Whose name is on that receipt? Mine, I guess, Barnett. Well, pick it up. Pick it up, I said. We can't leave things like that around. Okay. You got a partner. Who is he? Okay, I got a way of smoking him out. Be room 711, please. Hello, Miss Colby. This is Mr. Peterson again. Could you come over to my room for a minute? Something very unusual and extraordinary has happened. I saw you racing down the hall. I just had to call the police. You didn't call them any too soon. I got the wiretapping equipment in the recorder. They were plugged into 7-Eleven, all right. Well, I guess you tuned in on a wrong number. This wrong number is going to end up to be a long number, right across here. <laughs> but the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you'll witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened. 
and acted on the spot where it happened. You'll witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.